Thank you. Spoken by a true patriot himself, Pastor Thomas. Okay, first thing I want to do to get you practice too in making sure that your vocal cords are working, because there's going to be a little bit of audience participation here. I'm not just going to let you sit, okay? So, if you can hear me, yell. How about you people in the back, if you can hear me, yell. Excellent. All right, so we're ready to rock and roll. I'm pumped. This is fantastic. First of all, let me thank all of you for being here today. No matter what your viewpoint is, and I'm sure that if we went around and surveyed various people on any given issue, it might differ. But we're all here when most people are off of work because you care about your country and you care about what happens to it. Give yourselves a round of applause. You are patriots. The sleeping giant of Americans who want integrity and accountability in their government has been awakened. Let them hear you. Come on, they're kind of deaf. Let them hear you. There you go. So these tea parties have been going on across the United States, thousands of them, gathering millions of people. And town hall meetings, which normally would have a few dozen people, have been moved to gymnasiums, packed to the walls with people. I have, in my life, never seen anything like it. But people in Congress, people in the White House, they just don't get it. You've heard this quote before, but let me refresh your memories. It's by a, a lady I'd love to be in a room with for ten minutes, but they won't let me. Nancy Pelosi. Ooh, okay. And here's what she said about us. What they want is a continuation of the failed economic policies of President George Bush, which got us in the situation we are in now. What we want is a new direction. This Tea Party initiative is funded by the high end. We call it AstroTurf. It's not really a grassroots movement. It's AstroTurf by some of the wealthiest people in America to keep the focus on tax cuts for the rich. And see, she's, she's sending. She's everywhere, man. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Okay. Uh, anyway, there's some of the wealthiest people in America to keep focus on tax cuts for the rich instead of for the great middle class. Now, for the benefit of the people gathered here, if you are or are affiliated with some of the wealthiest people in America focusing on tax cuts for the rich instead of for the great middle class, please, let me hear you now. It's so quiet. Hmm. Let me try another one. If you are, as Harry Reid put it, evil mongers who use lies, rumors, and innuendo to drown out rational debate, let's hear you now. Wow. What? No AstroTurk? No rich people out there soak the PT uh, middle class? No lies spreading rumor milling evil mongers today? What kind of tea party is this? It's a great tea party. Give it up. Yeah. And then there's another friend from the state of New York, Congresswoman Louise Slaughter. Yeah, she's the one who said, I'm not doing town hall meetings. I'm not going to give these people a forum. My own dignity and the dignity of my office I hold is important to me. Say what, Louise? Does that make us those people? Your dignity as a congresswoman and as a person is somehow above listening to your constituents? Wow, I wonder if Ms. Slaughter's dignity is similarly threatened by granting an audience to lobbyists or campaign contributors. What do you think? You know, if the underlying issues for the future of this country weren't so serious, these diatribes would be almost comical. But this isn't comedy. It is serious business. 
Congress and the White House are running roughshod on the Constitution, and the people are rising up to say this isn't the direction they want to go. When the people who typically put their fingers to the wind to calibrate their positions suddenly decide to batten down the hatches and hide when the winds have reached hurricane force, it is a very disturbing thing for Americans. You know, wonder some of the press have characterized us as angry. We are! We wonder to ourselves if anyone at all is listening up there. We wonder why our own elected leaders are deriding us as being hateful, spiteful people, when all we are is people who really care about our country and want to be heard. What about our dignity, Louise Slaughter? Perhaps, if you took the time to listen, you would know that we are earnest, everyday people who have taken the time to do our homework and research. We don't have any lobbyists camped on our doorsteps or paying us to show up on a national holiday when most of us have a much needed day off. We are not anti-government hate mongers. To the contrary, we are people who so believe in and so cherish this great constitutional form of government that we are willing to stand up and be heard, even in the face of a concerted campaign to deride us as something we are not. <laughs> Dignity does not come from position or title. It is not conferred by an oath of office. It is a gift from God to each and every one of us. It is that dignity of the citizens that forms the basis of our nation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. God is not an interest group. He is the foundation of our freedom. And we are the people. Chant with me. We are the people. 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 That's right. We are the people. This is the third Tea Party event at which I've had the honor of speaking, and it's amazing how it's galvanized. This is as grassroots as it gets. If it were AstroTurf, as Nancy Pelosi says, then we would certainly know the answer to a simple yet critical question. What happens next? If we were AstroTurf, the organizational leaders would have everything mapped out for us. Gathering by gathering, issue by issue, if we were the kind of extremist, Kool-Aid drinking, hate mongers we have been called, we wouldn't need an answer to the question, what happens next? But we do need that answer. At this point, we are, to quote from the movie network, mad as hell, and we're not going to take it anymore.